This is your brain. This is Albert Einstein's brain and they are not the same. How do I know? After his death, Albert Einstein's brain was stolen by a pathologist called Thomas Stolz Harvey who came to conduct the autopsy. Harvey believed that the reason Albert Einstein was so smart is because his brain was different from everyone else. So he removed Einstein's brain and after removing it, he patched up his skull perfectly so that no one finds out that the brain is missing and after that, he took the brain, put it in a bucket and ran towards his house. Harvey took Einstein's brain to his basement and preserved it in a chemical called formaldehyde. First, he took pictures of that brain and then he made some very detailed notes about its external features and appearance. Sometimes, he would just sit back and stare at the Einstein's brain thinking that there must be a reason why he was so smart and he must find it. And to find what was happening inside the Einstein's brain, he must go inside. So he took a knife and started dissecting the brain. He sectioned the brain into 170 different pieces in a long process that took three months to complete. Harvey was not an amateur. He knew what he was doing. After that, those 170 pieces were further sliced into thousands of small slices that can be studied under a microscope. Harvey was smart. He did not keep all the slices to himself. Instead, he sent them around the world to different scientists from different universities so that everyone can look at the brain and draw their own conclusions. So, what did scientists find inside Einstein's brain? They found four major differences between a normal person's brain and the Einstein's brain. First, it was the parietal lobes. Scientists found that Einstein's parietal lobes, they are located right here, at the top back of your head. They were 15% larger compared to a normal person and this area is responsible for spatial and mathematical reasoning. In simple words, this part of the brain is used when we are visualizing or processing some very complex physical concepts. Second difference that scientists found was his prefrontal cortex. It is located right here at the front top of your brain. Einstein's prefrontal cortex was found to be relatively large and very well developed. This might have contributed to his remarkable ability to think in terms of theoretical concepts and his innovative problem-solving skills. Third difference was his corpus callosum. As we all know that our brain is divided into two parts, the left side and the right side. So how do these two sides communicate with each other? Well, it is the corpus callosum that helps in communicating, constantly transferring information from one side to the other side. In Einstein's case, corpus callosum was much thicker than a normal person, allowing for a better communication between his left and the right parts of the brain. And lastly, and most importantly, was the density of neurons themselves. Neurons are the messengers of the brain. They send information between different parts of the brain and to the spinal cord to the entire body. Scientists found that in certain areas, Einstein had a larger density of neurons compared to a normal person. This increased density might have helped him in processing new information as it comes. If you want to see those slices of Einstein's brain, you can actually see them by yourself. Currently, Einstein's brain is located in the Mutter Medical Museum in USA. Do not forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.